Good morning, everyone. Today we're going to look at Ohm's Law, and I, I think all of you know Ohm's Law. The potential difference across a conductor is directly proportional to the current in the conductor at a constant temperature. And first, let's look at that one. At a constant temperature, that means the resistance of my resistor is constant. And now this equation is an expression of Ohm's law, and it's actually easier if we rewrite that V equals I times R to understand why the potential difference is directly proportional to the current. If you've got a resistor that's got a constant resistance because you're not changing the temperature, if that one is constant, it means V is directly proportional to I. That means if this one doubles, it means the whole right-hand side will double, and that means that one will have to double, right? Or if this one divides by a factor 4, then that means the whole right-hand side divides by a factor 4, and the left-hand side has to divide by the factor. So they do the same thing. They either increase or decrease with the same factor. And then, obviously, if you want to draw a graph of that with potential difference in volts and current in ampere, you will get a straight line through the origin because they are directly proportional to each other. What's very important with Ohm's law is you have to know that you are putting in the correct variables. That variables must be true either for a specific resistor or for a combination of resistors or for the whole circuit. If you have a 24 volt cell over there and you've got a 4 ohm resistor and an 8 ohm resistor that you put in series over there and they ask you what is the reading of that ammeter now I want to use Ohm's law I want to use R equals V over I I'm looking for a current now which R and which V that 24 volts over there is for the whole circuit. It is not true for the 4 ohm. So don't put the 24 in with 4. It's also not true for the 8. So don't put the 24 with the 8. The 24 is for the whole circuit. If you want to use the 24 in there to get the current, we need R for the whole circuit. So first off, I'll need to say the total resistance of that circuit, since they're in series, I will get that by R1 plus R2, and that means 4 plus 8 is 12 volts for the, uh, sorry, 12 ohm for this whole circuit, so then I can use the 12 over there, and that will give me a current of 2 ampere which is the reading anywhere in that circuit, because remember now we are in series. If there's 2 coulomb per second traveling here, this is rate. It means there's 2 coulomb per second traveling over there, because there's nowhere to get out or to get into the circuit. Right, guys, so important. When you write R equals V over I, go and write down which part of the circuit you're using. Are you using the whole circuit? Are you using a combination, a parallel combination, or are you using a specific resistor? Because that will make you understand what you're putting in. Now let's look at an example here. The question was calculate the reading on the ammeter. They give you that 8 volts over this whole parallel combination. You will say if I've got it over the whole parallel, it means that's true for the top branch and it's true for the bottom branch. So 8 volts over there and 8 volts over there. And now you can work with only the top branch. right? If you work only with the top branch, then the values that you put in there is for the top branch. So the top branch has got a resistance of 4 and it's got 8 volts and the top branch will have a 2 ampere current traveling up there. And when you look at the bottom branch, now let's do Ohm's law, but only for the bottom branch. That will be 2 and 8, and then you end up with 4 ampere traveling in that bottom branch. And then you will remember that the series current is just the two branches added together. So together, that will give you a 6 ampere reading. 
Now that's the first method. The second method is to use Ohm's law, but now not use it for the separate branches. Now use it for the whole parallel combination. If you want the current through the whole parallel, you need to have the whole parallel resistance. So since they're in parallel, 1 over R, we're going to work it out. Remember to turn it upside down. That combination of resistors can be replaced with a single one over there of 1,33 ohm. And then if there's only one, it means the whole current will travel through that. So you get the whole resistance and that will give you the whole current for the parallel combination. So guys, just check that. For Ohm's law, you need to decide what am I working with. Am I working with the whole circuit? Am I using the parallel combination? Or am I working with a specific resistor? So that you put the right values into Ohm's law. Now, we get a lot of different resistors and they don't all obey Ohm's law, right? If they obey Ohm law, Ohm's law, we call them ohmic resistors, right? Like nichrome wire. There, the resistance is constant and the voltage will be, or the potential difference, will be directly proportional to the current. So you'll get a straight line through the origin. But sometimes you get other things like a light bulb, where when you've got different currents, R is going to change. So R change when the current change. And that means you don't get a directly proportional relationship. So they don't obey Ohm's law. So for them, it's no use using Ohm's law. But we are not expecting you at school level to do any calculations with things that are not ohmic resistors. So take it for granted if they give you something that it will be an ohmic resistor. Now we want to do a few examples of how we're going to apply Ohm's law to a circuit. First off, they're asking us for the reading of the ammeter over there. Now, they're putting in 6 volts into the circuit, and that part is using 4, so I know this whole parallel part is going to use 2 volts. Right. And then, if you have it for a whole parallel, then obviously it's true for the top one, and it is true for the bottom one as well. And now I can do one or two things. Remember, I can either work with the whole parallel. If you work with the whole parallel, I would have said 1 over R parallel is equal to 1 over R1 plus 1 over R2. So first you can work out the total resistance of the two together and then we can use Ohm's law and I always like to write on the right hand side of that equation just to remind me what I am working with. I'm working with the whole parallel now. For the whole parallel that is 2 and that is 2 and that tells me the current will now be 1 ampere. Right. But I could also have done Ohm's law separately for the two. So here you can say, let's go and work with the top and the bottom branches separately. So let's do R equals V over I for the top and also do R equals V over I for the bottom. Now for the top one, R is 6 and V is 2. So I end up with a current that is one third of an amp. Right. Moving on to the other side, now I'm using the bottom one. The total resistance is 3, and that is 2, and that means now I end up with 2 thirds of an ampere. And then if I have the, the current in both branches, I will say the series current is therefore just the current in the top part plus the current in the bottom one, and that will now be one-third plus two-thirds, and once again you end up with one ampere. Right guys, this is the time when you have to switch off the video and go on to number B and C and D, and then just come back to see if you understand. Right, let's see if you are correct with number B. With number B, they told us 6 volts is what they put in, 3 volts used over here, so immediately this parallel combination is going to use 3 volts, and that will be true for the bottom one and for the top one. 
top one, bottom one, and the whole parallel will be using 3 volts because all together the circuit must use 6 volts. Now the moment that I do that, I have got two of Ohm's three things over here. Now they're looking for the ammeter reading at the top, but I'm going to start by working with what I've got. That potential difference and that resistance is true for this one. So I'm going to use R equals V over I, and I'm going to write down I'm now working with the bottom branch. So what I do is just true for the bottom branch. So for the bottom branch, the resistance is 2, and the potential difference is 3, and that means the current in that bottom branch is going to be 1.5 ampere. And once you've worked something out, go and write it into your circuit diagram, because then you will have it when you want to use it again. Now here they're telling us that 2 ampere, 2 coulombs per second, are arriving at that point, and 1 per 5 is going down. So immediately I'm going to say, okay, but the total series current is just the current in the top plus the current in the bottom branch. Right, so there's 2 ampere arriving. I need the current at the top, right, and the current at the bottom is 1.5, so immediately the current there at the top, which is a meter A1 that I'm looking for, is going to be 0 0.5 ampere. Right, I hope all of you had that correct. Let's look what you did with number C. Now, with number C, the question was that voltmeter over there. So, if only I had the voltmeter reading or the potential difference over this part, then I can subtract from 12. 12 is what I put in for the whole circuit. Let's see what's being used over here. Now, what do I have? For the bottom one, I've got the resistance, but I don't have the current. Okay, but they give me the total series current, so I can get the current in the bottom branch. So I will say the total series current that arrive over here is going to split up, and I can add them together, the current in the top and the current in the bottom. Right, so you have 3 ampere arriving, there's 1 ampere going to the top, that means the current going into the bottom branch is going to be 2 ampere. And remember, if you if you calculated something, go and write it in. So the bottom branch will have 2 ampere. And immediately that will tell me I can work with R equals V over I because I've got all the values for the bottom branch. Now for the bottom branch, R is 2 and the current is 2. So the voltage used in that bottom branch is 4 volts. The potential difference over the bottom branch is 4 volts, which means over the top will be 4 volts, which means this whole parallel part will be using 4 volts. And then we can say 12 is put into the circuit. This part is using 4 volts, and that is in series with that part. So then that voltmeter reading over there will be 12 minus the voltmeter reading over the parallel, and that will be 12 minus 4. That will be 8 volts. Now we're looking at the very last one there on the page. Calculate the value of R. Now our R is up there. What do I know about R? Well, nothing at the moment, but I know 12 volts is what they put into the circuit, and 8 volts is used over there. So I know this parallel thing is going to use the rest of 12, so that will be 4 volts, and that will be true for the bottom and also true for the top. Now I've got 2 out of 3. Now this is not what I'm looking for, I'm actually looking for that resistance, but let's start with what I've got. Let's use R equals V over I, and now I am working with the, uh, sorry, with the bottom branch, right, bottom branch. So now I'm working with the bottom branch, and for that the total resistance in the bottom branch is 4, the voltmeter reading over there also 4, which tells me that the current in that bottom branch is 1 ampere, and immediately go and write it in, because that is going to show you what you have to do. You've got 3 ampere, 3 coulomb reaching this point per second, and one of them are choosing down, so the rest must be choosing the other one. The series current arriving there will be the current in the top branch plus the current in the 
bottom branch. So you've got three ampere arriving. You're looking for the current in the top branch. You know the bottom branch is using one. So the current in that top branch is going to be two ampere. Right, so now immediately go and write it in. And now I've got for that top branch the potential difference and the current. So now I'm going to work with R equals V over I, but this time I'm working with the top branch. So for the top branch, V is 4 and the current is 2, and that will give me my answer of 2 ohm, the total resistance for the top branch.